In the summertime, there was always a uh, fruit stand on the side of the road. They sold all kinds of fruit. My dad and I picked up watermelon. We'd pick up a watermelon and we'd set it down in between us on the front seat, took a pocket knife, and as we drove along, we'd cut little square plugs out of the top of that melon, eat them, and throw the rinds out the window and go off the parts on them. The whole experience was a, uh, was an enjoyment. It isn't just about collecting. I've been doing these bottle trees for about 15 years now, but I've always collected. Collection started in the early 50s when I was a little boy. That's where dad and I ended up doing is uh, collecting bottles. Getting ready to mix a little concrete for a, a bottle tree that I'm gonna build. I'll get it all set up here and then when I get the tree done, I'll, uh, I'll mix this and so it'll be all set to go once I get the pipe in the ground. It doesn't take long. I've been living here just about the next month will be 32 years. I always did like it here. It's not a neighborhood, it's quiet, peaceful, no restrictions. I went around the utilities. I went around electricity with uh, solar panels. The whole house I wired for 12 volt. I had everything 12 volt. I put in a water pumping windmill. The wind did it for me, gave me my water. I have Edison now. One utility, that's all. I'm not bothered by city uh, taxes or the fees they put on you. I'm just stuck with one utility. Other than that, it's free living. I worked in control rooms. That's, uh, I paid a little better and uh, a little bit more responsibility. But they, they always talked about each other. It was all racism. It was horrible. I just listened and did my job. I was stuck because I wasn't like they were. Because I wasn't gonna hate somebody because his skin was a different color. I can't hate anybody. A man is a man. You don't judge. But there aren't people, there's people out there that don't, they don't go by that rule. And you have to live with it. But you've got to forgive. If you don't forgive, negativity will never escape you. You'll never get rid of it. You take one of these plastic bags from a grocery store, tie a rope through the handles, hang it around your neck in front of your heart, okay? And every time you have a negative thought, I don't care what it is, from the start of the morning, until when you go to bed at night, if you get a negative thought, reach down and pick up a rock and put it in the sack. Before long, you're gonna be walking like this. You're not gonna be able to stand straight up anymore. There's too much weight in it. On the positive side, it's like having a big cup and you fill it up with this liquid. I don't know what you call it. Maybe it's called goodness, maybe it's called honey, but it is good stuff. Everywhere you go, everywhere, that cup is overflowing. It might puddle up in front of you. You step in it and you'll walk. And everywhere you walk, you leave footprints. You touch something, it comes off your hands. It's all over. People come in here and they smile, and they're smiling when they leave. I'm 67, I'll be 68 in about three months. I'm up every morning at least by four, and uh, I weld at five. I have two machines. I have one on the porch over here, it's a bicycle. I do my legs, and there's one around the corner over here. I sit on a bucket and do my arms. You don't want your heart doing your work for you. You want your muscles to do it. You gotta have muscles first. And then uh, whatever your hands find to do, do with all your might. Nobody's perfect, but do the best you can. You wanna be rich? You can be rich. If you wanna be happy, you can be happy. If you wanna be free, you do what you wanna do. That's what I do, just do it.
There's things on top of these uh, trees that I, I found when I was a kid. There's a Christmas present out there, an old Lionel train. I remember unwrapping that in 1949. I was three years old. It's up there. There's a, a handmade rake here. I found that in the summer of 59 on a camping trip with my father out in the desert. Uh, I was going from eighth to ninth grade that summer. There's lots of things like that, lots of memories. And it doesn't stop there, because uh, <laughs> I, I've got memories that it might have been 10 years ago, it might have been 15. I was out finding stuff, collecting stuff. And, oh, it's crazy. Favorites to me are things like this. This was uh, on my mother's wall uh, the day she died. She bought it in 1939, second hand, for her uh, first year of college. She was 20 years old. Uh, I was born seven years later. Special meaning. Sometimes when I'm working out here building something, and I go back to a place in time and it just, you know, the feels like old dad's right with me. My father had Alzheimer's really bad, and uh, he could remember old times, but he couldn't remember yesterday, so I don't know. But he was uh, on his way by the time he was my age. I'm building something here that's gonna last forever. I'm gonna last forever. <laughs> and, and it's not where your mind is. I'm gonna last forever. It's already said and done, guaranteed. Thank you.